Hello, hello, hello everyone. How are you guys doing? It is your fella Kuro here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, all right? I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now before we get into this that I freaking love you and I appreciate you for checking this thing out. If you don't know what this thing is, this is my new Stamina Templar build video. It is a sword and board front bar uh, Stamina Templar, a little bit different. I highly doubt you're, you're gonna see many people running something like this before this video. If you see anyone after this video, you remember that you know where it came from, all right? Make sure, make sure, <laughs> make sure you let them know that you know, okay? But uh, yeah, this build is fun. I love this build. It's tanky. It's got damage. Got some legs. It's got literally everything that I want in a stamina templar build, and it's been one of my favorite stamina templar builds that I've played in the last few patches. Is that because stamina templar got buffed? Quite possibly. Is that because I also just am a whore for a sword and board front bar? Definitely. Definitely. So we're gonna talk about that today. We're just gonna go over it. I don't really if you want to see gameplay I have a whole video full of gameplay of it And I've got a whole bunch more clips that we'll put in further videos So yeah before we get into it though I do just want to say that I do have a discord where I hang out with people talk about builds talk about gameplay Talk about everything if you want to join that please We would love to have you in the family by all means meet us there second of all if you're not following me on Twitch You probably should be because I play this build I play other builds I test new builds all the time over there most days and this coming weekend this this video is being posted on a Saturday, so this, it's today I'm gonna be playing Mag DK on stream for the first time. So if you want to check that out, by all means, come and check it out. And uh, lastly, don't forget to uh, subscribe because that helps me out a whole bunch and it's free. So you should totally do that. Uh, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, leave a thumbs down. If you think I'm stupid, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, that's about that's about it. So let's go ahead and get into this build video because I'm sure those of you that actually want to see this build probably don't want to listen to me talk all fucking day. Alright, let's go. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and just jump on into the build here. I'm going to buff up as much as I can without uh, going and proccing like every last set that I have. I'm just going to get the basic stats here. Take a quick look. As you can see, we've got... Uh, 5200 weapon damage with very minor buffs, about 30% crit, so that's our offensive stats. We have very low pen, 700, but we do get major, major and minor breach, so that's not a big deal, so don't worry about that too much. With our rally active, we do get 2000 stamina recovery with our rune as well, so more stamina recovery that way, very, very solid. 28k health, uh, 27k stam on the back bar, and 28.3 on the front bar, 14k mag. Armor is a little bit humble without one of our sets propped, but it is still pretty decent at 24k, goes up to about 28, and then I have 1800 crit resist, which in my opinion is not an important stat, so don't even worry about that. I, I might make a video about that, if you think I'm wrong, that that's, that's your opinion. I don't like critical resistance, I think it's pretty fucking useless to have right now, and uh, yeah, so ignore crit resist in my opinion. For the race, I am playing as an orc. I don't think it shows that on the stat sheet anywhere. It's somewhere here. Just to look at it. There you go. I'm playing as an orc because I like the movement speed that it provides as well as the additional weapon and spell damage. That's very helpful in my opinion. Other good races would be Imperial for the additional health and uh, resource reduction on the cost of your abilities. Very, very strong, very helpful. And we are using a health-based heal currently. Uh, so that would beef up the heal on that. And then of course there is also Nord, which makes you a little bit tankier at face value, gives you more um, ultimate generation, and I don't know, it's it's also just an aesthetically appealing class. Who doesn't like to be a Nord, okay? So yeah, those are the three that I would choose. I personally like Orc just for the movement and the damage. Of the two are also very, very strong options. They may even be better on paper. Come down here to my Mundus Stone, I'm using the Serpent, and I highly recommend you use the Serpent and nothing else, okay? I don't think anything else is going to be worth using on this build. Just use the Serpent. Trust me. We'll talk about the food later, but that is it for the stats, the race, and the Mundus. Let's go ahead and look at the gear. Starting here on my back bar, yes, this is a sword and board front bar build, so 2H is the back bar. I'm using a Vatishran Greatsword. Perfected will be cool, but I'm a plebeian and I don't have the time to farm that so just using normal It's not that hard to get guys. I've had some of you guys say that it's uh, it's a painful farm You don't have time for it. It's really not that bad So I highly recommend you just do it because it's worth it If you don't know what Vatishran's 2h does it gives you stacks of weapon damage And then when you when you get to the maximum of those stacks you get a proc damage for aoe instant damage It's good. It's a very strong proc. It uh, feels really good on pretty much any build 
Some people say it's cheesy, some people say it's a carry. I don't really find it to be that way uh, because it doesn't actually hit that hard. It does hit pretty hard on this build because we can get some really high weapon damage to make it hit hard, but even then it's not like a carry or anything. And now you may be asking why a 2H sword, why an urn honed, not a sharpened maul? Well, I don't do any damage on my 2H bar, but I do have four different heals on my 2H bar. So we are buffing up the amount of healing that I get from those heals with a sword that gives me weapon damage, with Nern Hone that gives me weapon damage, and also spell damage because that'll be important. Next patch, we'll go over that in just a minute. And I'm also using a weapon damage enchant there for the extra weapon and spell damage. Now on my, my sword and board front bar, I am using a deadly sword and shield. I'm using a Nern Honed one-hander, again primarily for the healing. You can use pretty much whatever trait you prefer. You can use Sharpened, that'll give you marginally more damage than a Nern Honed, but you'll have slightly less healing. You can use Defending, even, if you just want to be tankier on this bar. It's not going to be a massive difference because it is, of course, like I said, it's a one-handed bar, so the, the trait isn't a big, big deal. Um, it, it really doesn't matter all that much because you're still going to have a lot of damage even with something like Defending on, so, you know, again, do whatever the hell you want. If you don't know what this set does, uh, you're probably under a rock if you're a Stamplar player because this is kind of the Stamplar set right now. I've, I've never really used it, I've always known it was strong, didn't get around to it, but now I'm finally trying it out and uh, I believe the hype. Because it's weapon damage, weapon damage, weapon crit. Very very solid 2, 3, and 4 piece, and then on the 5th piece, increase the damage of your damage over time and channeled abilities by 18%. So that's our jabs, okay? That is our primary damage source and my primary offensive skill. I don't use an execute, I just jab, I jab the shit out of people, and they die because this set is so strong. It's getting a bit of a nerf next patch, going down to 15% instead of 18%, but that's not really gonna matter because it's still gonna crack people's skulls apart. And also, it's going to be uh, hybridized like everything else, so it's also going to give us spell damage, which again, like I said, is pretty important and pretty significant when we get into the skills. My shield, I have a stamina enchant, and I do use a poison on this bar. If you want to use an enchant, I recommend you use a disease enchant. Uh, we'll talk about poisons later, though. Getting down into the armor pieces, I'm using the new Magma Incarnate Monster set. If you do not know what this does, it gives us mag and stam recov, very helpful for sustain across the board. And when you heal yourself or an ally, yada yada yada, you will get 3,000 armor, 215 weapon and spell damage for 10 seconds. It'll be down 5 seconds, up 10 seconds. This is a super, super nice, like really balanced set. It gives you damage, it gives you sustain, and it gives you survivability. So I think this is a very, very strong set, solo or in group, because it will affect your party members. However, if you do not have it, if you do not have the DLC, if you don't want to bother farming this or getting keys, you can also use the classics, you can use Bloodspawn, you can use Engine Guardian, you can use Balor, all of those are going to be great options on this build as well. So just use what you have, use what you prefer. I like this. This is good. I keep this. We're not going to talk about traits just yet because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very unhappy with my traits, so we'll leave that for after I've gone over the sets. Next set, my primary 5-piece, aside from Deadly, is Ravager. Now, a lot of the people, a lot of people do not realize how good the set still is on certain classes and certain setups for skills. Personally, I find this to be one of the best damage sets that you could possibly have, especially for my playstyle, which is a very defensive playstyle. Like, even when I'm going offensive, I'm still defensive, and this plays into that very well. If you don't know what this does, it gives us critical, it gives us health, and it gives us weapon damage. Everything this build needs, because again, health-based heal, we want that tankiness. Crit, we're a Stamplar, we like to crit jabs, we get extra crit damage, it's very, very nice to have. And then weapon damage, for obvious reasons. Now, the five pieces where this set gets a little bit interesting. Each time you attempt to reduce a target's physical or spell resistance, you gain a stack of Ravager for 5 seconds, increasing your weapon damage by 146. You can gain 1 stack per second, and it maxes out at 4 stacks, okay? That means, in only 4 seconds, you will get a bonus of, we're just gonna round up to 150 per stack, 600 weapon damage. Do you know what other set also used to give 600 weapon damage, but they nerfed it? Fury. You know how long it took to get 600 weapon damage with Fury? 20 seconds. This gives you old fury weapon damage in 4 seconds, and all you need to do is have Caltrops down, 
and remember to cast your your power of the light every couple seconds. You know, every you're going to cast it. You're not gonna forget to cast power of the light on a stampler, and you're gonna keep your fucking stacks on this on this set constantly. Okay, this set is fucking crazy weapon damage wise. Very very strong. It gives us almost as much weapon damage as clever alchemist. It's only less by like roughly a hundred, maybe even slightly less than one hundred weapon damage. So this thing is nuts. And it's got zero cooldown. It's always gonna have. You're always gonna have at least one stack. It's very easy to get four stacks because we're using caltrops and we're gonna be constantly debuffing anyone that is standing in those every second. So this set procs up really, really fast and is very, very strong. Now we're gonna move on down to the jewelry, just because I want to uh, go over some stuff in a specific order here. For the jewelry, I have two ravaging on and one deadly. I have two swift and one infused. I like the Swift because I need movement speed because there's a lot of damage right now. Dark Convergence is kind of a bitch, it kind of ruins your movement, you need to get that speed so you can get out of the bad situations and avoid the fuckery, okay? If you are playing in a group and you feel comfortable without the speed, what I would recommend then is dropping the Infused, dropping the Swift, and going with three Bloodthirsty because Bloodthirsty is going to give you the most possible effective damage on a Stamplar that is not using an Execute. It's going to make your jabs hit harder and harder the lower someone's health gets, and that is going to make them regret their life decisions. I, I promise you. Now, this way, it is still very strong, and we do get a little bit more extra healing up front with uh, the one infused, and we also get mobility to stay alive. But again, if you want more damage, the most damage possible, uh, Bloodthirsty is your move. So yeah. Now, I want to talk about armor traits, armor weights. I have the jewelry set up this way for a very specific reason. Two Ravager on the, uh, the, the jewelry, so that way I can have three pieces of armor. Because I want three heavy armor only. You want three heavy, you want one, two, three medium with your two deadly pieces on the small pieces of your armor, and one of your magma incarnate. And then, you would ideally have a light magma incarnate piece as well because that will give you three heavy three medium three light you'll get your 511 passives you'll get the boost to all your stats you'll get a little bit of crit you'll be at a nice comfy you know 31 percent crit you'll still have a lot of weapon damage you'll have good armor you're gonna have everything that you might possibly want or need on this setup it's gonna feel really good i promise you for traits um reinforced heavy chest 100 percent everything else that's kind of your choice um some people like mpen i don't I do not want M-Pen, I would rather have one reinforced chest and literally everything else sturdy. I'd, I'd rather have seven pieces of sturdy than M-Pen. But you can mix it up, three M-Pen, three sturdy, one reinforced, uh, you know, two sturdy, four M-Pen, whatever you feel comfortable with. I want more sturdy because blocking is life on this build because all of our heals are heal over time so we don't get to just spam ourselves back up to full health like a Magplar like a mag crow, like any of those classes, so it's very important that we are able to heal through damage while avoiding damage. We do get a, we do get a, a, a what's the word, increase to our blocked damage, so that makes blocking very effective, and you want to use blocking on this build as often as you possibly can, and you don't want it to steal all of your stamina away from you. For enchants, it's the same thing as usual, you want triglyphs on the big pieces, stam glyphs on the small pieces. And that is it for the gear. Let's take a look at the skills. This is where things get a little funky, okay? Resolving Vigor, primary heal. You already know what this does. Power of the Light. This is Stamplar's main burst tool right here. This copies over 50% of the damage you do within 10 seconds, or 6 seconds after applying it, and then blows up after you have beat the shit out of somebody, okay? It, add, it literally adds injury to injury, and it's it's a very fun skill to use. It also afflicts them with a minor breach, reducing their armor by a decent amount. And it uh, it is undodgeable. It does a little bit of damage up front. Decent amount of damage, you might be able to see it pop for 2k initial, on the initial. So if someone is rolling away at low health, you can literally spam this and kill them. If they're running away from you like a coward, you can spam this and kill them sometimes. And it, it's funny, it's hilarious. And yeah, this is a very important skill for Stamina Templar, especially when you're not using an Execute like I am not. Reverberating Bash, this is my favorite skill in the game, and it has been for a very long time, and I will talk to you about why that is. Reverb Bash deals an incredible amount of damage. Now, I am obviously not fully buffed up, but I will go ahead and buff up a little bit. I can't proc my monster set without taking damage, so we're just going to get our rallies, or uh, all the other stuff, and then we're going to look at the damage. 5700 damage when they go down, 
5,700 damage when they break free. That is 10,000... Oh, what, 14? I mean, uh, 11... 11.4k? That's a very, very, very hard-hitting, um... Stun. It hurts. Really fucking bad. And they don't expect it, because you're on your defensive bar. Or at least, they think you are. So, you've got this incredibly powerful stun. It also has a bit of a broken animation, so sometimes people can't break free of it. They don't even know what happens sometimes, because there's not much of an animation with it at all. So it catches them really off guard. And it works really well with your offensive combo. And I will go over the combos for healing and for offense in just a moment. We're going to talk about the rest of the skills first. Blinding Flare. This got changed, this patch. Uh, but the Flare in general did from the Alliance support skill line. This is a very strong skill now, at least as a passive. This gives you major protection while you have it slotted. And it also gives you a, you know, an AoE of stealth detection, but it costs a shitload, so I don't really cast it that often. But it is an option for you. The important thing is that it gives you major protection. Because whenever we cast our jabs, which you know what jabs do. These hurt ridiculously hard. They slow people, and they give us crit. It's AoE. It's undodgeable. This is just, this is the Stamplar move. You know what it is. I'm not even going to talk about it too much. It just, you know, the tooltip gets up to like just about 6k on our sword and board bar on this build. That's all that really matters. That's all you need to know. But yeah, when you use this, the Adric Spear passive down here, shield wall, spear wall, gives you minor protection. So while we are on our offensive bar, we have the additional armor from our shield. If you're using a defending weapon, you can get some more armor that way. You get minor protection from casting jabs, and you get major protection from blinding flare. So that is a 15% raw damage mitigation to everything, as well as additional armor through having a shield slotted. And that's that's a lot of mitigation. I am in all damage sets. Everything I am using is damage. We've got three heavy on, you can you know you can call that cheesy if you want. But we are still in all fucking damage, and we get to be super, super tanky through healing and through these percentage damage mitigations. It's a very, very strong combo, and I love it. Uh, I have spear wall, or shield wall heal, spell wall, good lord, man, use your mouth. Uh, spell wall there, I don't mean to. I usually have crescent sweep right here. This is a very, very good ultimate, offensively, for a lot of reasons. It's cheap, it hits really hard, and it has a pulsating AoE around you, so wherever you go, death follows. And we like that shit. Uh, you could also use Dawnbreaker if you want to, if you want that classic Stamplar feel. Uh, it is a more bursty initial hit in most cases, and it does have a very, very, very potent dot that will kill a lot of people. However, it does have a, you know, a lot more cost and it does take a little bit long. It's harder to use as well because the dot doesn't follow anybody. It's only a cone. It's not a, not a full 360 AoE and it misses more often than it actually hits people, but it's still a very strong option. Now moving over to the front bar. <laughs> Just kidding, the back bar. We've got Rally. This is our primary burst heal. Don't know why the hell does it say Living Dark? Stop that. This is a primary burst heal. This is the only fucking option we have for a burst heal. I've seen some Stamplars using Honor the Dead Dispatch, and that's weird. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. Uh, you want to use Rally because it is the most important. It gives us brutality, it gives us weapon damage, and it does give us the burst heal when we use it effectively. And there's not much else to say about this. You guys already know what this does. The game's been out fucking seven, eight years. So if you have a question, ask it in the comments. Living Dark. This is a very important skill to this build. This is a heal that scales off of our maximum health. So, as you can see, it's a decent, decent value. 3k every 0.5 seconds, because this procs whenever you take damage once every 0.5 seconds. So, you can get two ticks of this in a second if you're getting beat on, and you usually will be being beat on. It's a very good heal to use while going offensive. If you pop this, swap to your sword and board bar, pop a vigor, you're going to have four seconds of basically being impervious to do your damage and that will be enough to kill a majority of players that aren't super, super sweaty. And you will notice it. Now next patch, this is going to be much, much better for us because the way this works is that it scales off of either your max health or your spell damage, whichever one would end up leading to it having a higher value. 
Next patch, all of the sets that we are using are going to be hybridized. So between Rally or between Deadly and Ravager, we are going to get an extra over 1,000 spell damage. And casting this also gives us an additional 10% spell damage. So we are going to be sitting at a pretty good 5.3, 5.4k spell damage, which will probably bring this value up a good little bit, and it'll be even more effective. We also do have Restoring Focus. This is an armor buff, this is a sustain buff, and it is an additional heal if you are standing in it. The heal is not to be underestimated, I promise you. It is actually pretty damn solid. It's not as good as, you know, some things, but it's still very good. And we'll talk about that again in a minute here. Extended Ritual. This is the most important skill defensively, in my opinion. Uh, some people are not running this because people have Plague Break on. Fuck that. That's like 10% of your fights, not 100%. This excels in the 90% of fights that don't have Plague Break. However, you will sometimes blow yourself the fuck up the second someone that is using Plague Break shows up, and you will want to die. You will want to curse the heavens for the day you were born, and uh, I feel that, okay? I feel you on that, but trust me, it's worth it. That pain and suffering that you feel, you'll get over it when you get a, you know, a 1v7 because you were able to cleanse off every defile that came your way. It feels really good. If you don't know what the skill does, it gives us a big AoE circle of healing, which is helpful and it gives us a cleanse, remove five harmful effects, and it also procs our very, very important passive of Sacred Ground, which gives us minor mending while we're inside of one of our circles, and also increases the damage we can block by 10%. Some people that are not using Purifying Ritual don't really realize how important it is. Two very, very important parts of our passive that everything that we- this is basically all the fuck we have for survivability, is this. We get 8% extra healing and 10% extra block mitigation. If you don't have Ritual, you literally have to be standing inside your rune to get those passives, and you cannot do that very often because I don't know if you noticed, this rune is kind of tiny as shit. So, you want your Ritual. If not just for the cleanse or the heal, for those passives. Now, we do of course have Razor Caltrops. This is an AoE circle on the ground that slows people, reduces their armor, and deals a little bit of damage. This is our primary method of procking our Ravager set, as well as dealing a little bit of additional pressure. Uh, it does hit decently hard when we're on our front bar because we do have Deadly on, and it will increase the damage by 15 or 18%. It's gonna go down to 15 next patch, whatever. And it's pretty good. It's pretty damn solid skill. It helps us control the fight pretty well, because if they touch it, they're gonna be slow. And, you know, we are not going to be slow. Unless we are, then, well, that's just unfortunate. But it is what it is. So yeah, Caltrops, very important skill. Now, for the back bar ultimate, I usually use a defensive ultimate. I typically stick with Remembrance, because it's a pretty strong heal over time. For four seconds, you basically become invincible. Sometimes you'll die while casting this, and you'll want to scream. If you don't want to take that risk, you could use something like Precognition. I'm using this instead of the other morph because I really don't care about that minor uh, protection. And being able to use this while I'm stunned might save my life one day. I don't really fucking know. I haven't even used it since I put it on. But uh, it's an option. And there's also the choice of changing which bar has your defensive ult. So you can use Spell Wall, which is by far one of my favorite ultimates in the game. And then you can put your Crescent or your Dawnbreaker on your 2H bar. But the thing is, with Crescent Sweep, that feels very, very unnatural to me. And the animation is just kind of clunky for swapping back to my Sword and Board Bar. So I typically, if I'm using Sword and Shield Ultimate, I'll use Dawnbreaker instead because it feels a little more natural. And, uh, yeah. Now, let's talk about, real quick, the differences between Crescent and Dawnbreaker and why I think you should use certain ones in certain situations. Crescent Sweep is an ultimate that lets you control the fight because you are the center of the damage and you can use this constantly, okay? If some, if you are chasing people, you want this ultimate. If you are the one that is being the aggressor at all times, you want this ultimate. If you find that you are typically a more defensive player, you're gonna get a lot more like use out of Dawnbreaker because this is a better ultimate for when you are not really in control of the fight. This gives you the control for a split second, for that couple of seconds that you have stunned everybody. And this is a very good ultimate for kiting, because they're going to come at you, they're going to chase you, they're going to stand in your caltrops, you're going to turn around, you're going to slap them all in the fucking face with the Dawnbreaker, knock them all over, and start jabbing, and it's very, very effective. You can't really do that with Crescent Sweep because nobody gets stunned, so it's you have to be on top of your shit when you're using Crescent Sweep. And that is, you get you to pick, it's a, it's a give and take. This will also give you a bit of extra weapon damage passively, so you can use that if you'd like. 
And that is how I feel about that. Keep those words in mind. And uh, hell, I've, I've sometimes even used Crescent on my front and Dawnbreaker on my back when I'm feeling fucking insane. Because they are both very good for different reasons. Now, let's go ahead real quick and just go over the combos that I feel like we need need to understand to play this build efficiently by beating up Mr. Bone Goliath here. We're going to buff up just a little bit. We're not, not going to bother getting our full buffs down. Defensively, you always want to be inside your circles. You don't have to be in your rune at all times, but it is much better to be in your rune when you're going offensive than to not be in your rune, and I promise you that, okay? It's very, very important that you remember at least to be inside of your ritual when you are going offense because you are going to be very vulnerable otherwise. So, that is first and foremost. Second most important, Caltrops. That is procking your damage buff, and that is debuffing the enemy, making them take more damage, and making them not be able to move as efficiently around the battlefield. Now, when it comes to your offensive combo, the way I like to do this, Power of the Light, Jab, Jab, Reverb, Crescent Sweep. That's the full combo, and that will kill just about anyone as long as they are not a tank or turtling up while fighting you. It is an extremely potent combo. Of course, you will have to mix it up depending on how some people react to you, but I, I almost never recommend stunning right after the power of the light. What is most effective is to put the power of the light up, do some damage, you can do probably three sets of jabs, and then stun right before the power of the light goes off so they have no choice but to take that damage to the nose and then react, okay? If you stun them, and then do damage, they're gonna break free, they're gonna start healing, they might be at full health and this thing goes off and they might not take that much pressure. So you want to stun, typically, right before the power of the light goes off, otherwise you are losing out on the burst window. You can also crescent sweep right after putting the power of the light up, and then stun. It's really up to you, but I like to combo the crescent sweep's burst with the burst of the purifying light, power of the light, because that is going to be a lot of pressure instantly so if they are not going full defense mode they are not going to be ready for it now obviously you're going to jab somebody one time sometimes they're going to turtle up they're going to get on the back bar they're going to hold block they're going to start healing fuck those guys they're annoying you're going to have to figure it out yourself there's no real specific way to deal with that that's just a trial and error kind of thing but if they are being reckless if they are chasing you because they are fully out because they're outnumbering the shit of you just hit them with one of these there you go there you go you can crescent right before the stun, you can crescent right after the stun, whatever you want to do, it's going to kill them. It's going to hurt. And then just start jabbing after the after the power light goes off, you're good to go. Now when it comes to defensive and staying alive, you want to make sure you always have your rally up at all times. It's very important, otherwise you're not going to be able to burst heroes. Heal yourself with it. And uh, also remember never to fucking spam rally. I've seen some people just standing there doing this shit. This shit does not help you, okay? This shit makes, makes you waste stam. Don't do this shit, okay? When you are in danger, when you've got 17 fucking people on you, you want to find the first thing you can hide behind. You want to drop your fucking circles, just do this, what I'm doing right here, and then get over on this bar, block, and bigger. You've got four different heal over times healing you right now. You will not die if you are holding block, okay? I promise you. Of course, there's going to be exceptions, there's going to be people that fear you, that stun you through your block, and they're going to kill you. It will happen, but... In most situations, if you are inside your rune, inside your ritual, you have your vigor up, and you have your living dark healing you as everyone is banging on you and you are blocking their damage, they're going to heal you more so than they are going to hurt you, and it is going to be very effective at you staying alive. And that is when you can turn the fight around. Because with Reverberating Bash, you can cast it while blocking for ridiculous amounts of damage, okay? It hits very fucking hard. Like I said, people do not expect to be bursted while you are on the defense. You want to keep that element of surprise in mind when you are fighting, okay? It's not gonna be, you know, people are gonna know what's happening sometimes. If the fight's long, they're gonna know what to expect, but you can catch so many people off guard by hitting them with this combo. You know, you're blocking, they're hitting you, just put the quick power of the light up, reverb into the crescent sweep, and just jab the shit out of them. They're gonna break free, they're gonna just start doing this shit, they're gonna, they're gonna freak out, they're gonna start rolling, you're just gonna poke them. Just poke them while they're rolling. Fuck them. They're gonna die. I promise you. And yeah, that, that's that's basically it for the important, you know, rotations. Now, let's real quick talk about consumables. We'll talk about CP, and then I'll stop fucking bothering you guys with this information that you probably don't need, but, you know, it's there if you want it. For food... Oh, I don't have one. Okay, well, currently, <laughs> I am using Artem Takeaway Broth. I like this because it gives me more, um, sustain. 
while giving me health, stam, you know, the things that you like to see. Also, a little bit of health recovery, not really that important, but I think it's important to say that I'm not playing a vampire on this build. If you want to play vampire, you'll be a lot tankier, and you might like it. I just prefer having as much sustain as possible on my Stamplar when I'm playing it, because I feel like Stamplar has enough pressure naturally that building your sustain is more effective. But, so I'm using our TAM Takeaway Broth. It is a bit expensive. You can use the alternative, which is Dubious Cameron Throne, if you want. Uh, you know, it's your choice, but getting the Artem Takeaway Broth will take it to just a slightly higher level. Or, you could use Bewitched Sugar Skulls. This will give you more health for your health-based heal, more max stamina, and more magicka, which is actually very helpful sometimes, because sometimes you gotta cleanse two or three times, sometimes you have a hard time keeping up your, uh, your living dark when you need it, and the additional sustain of having that extra magicka up front is nice. And I like it quite a bit. But if you're gonna do that, I highly, highly recommend you change your infused piece, or if you're not using any infused, just one piece of your jewelry's enchant to stamina recovery, because again, stamina recovery is very important on the stamina templar, in my opinion. So yeah, that is what I have to say about that. And then coming down into the poisons, we're gonna talk about those, because I like poisons. We've got the double dot, double hot poisons. These are my absolute favorite to run on a sword and board bar, because the whole build is about being offensive and defensive at the same time, and these poisons really play into that. They do a lot of damage, and they do a good bit of healing back to us when they proc. If you want to go nuts to butts full damage, you can go with the regular double dot poison. It doesn't do more damage than these, but it does last longer, so you are going to put more pressure into somebody. You could even do the double dot, double hot on your front, and the double dot straight up on your back, just to get four different poison dots proccing on people all at once if things go your way. It is very effective. It is very effective. And that is it for poisons. You should see all the recipes on the screen. And lastly, we're going to talk about potions. We're using tripods. Obviously, the most important potion for pretty much any solo player because you need to manage all of your resources at the same time when you're playing alone in most situations. It's very important. It gives us health, gives us magicka, magicka recovery. Again, we have a we have some important magicka abilities on this build that we want to be able to use, so this is a massive boon for us. And then we also have stamina recovery and max stamina. Super, super important. I also recommend you have some health, stamina, and immovability potions on you, because sometimes you've got someone that's fear spamming you, or just being an annoying pest and making it, you know, javelining you whenever you're trying to do your damage, and you can't kill anybody because you just can't get a full combo off. This, that's when you use this. You will suffer sometimes because you're not going to have magic after using these, so be smart when you use these, but this is going to help you get your burst combo off when you really need to. Highly recommend having some of these on you at all times. What is this? Uh, and then you want these. Essence of Immovability, they give you immovability, stamina, and stealth detection. You want detect pots in PvP right now. The night blades are rampant, you need detect pots. These detect pots are a bitch because they use Karas eggs, and Karas eggs are very expensive. But if you can fork out the dough for a couple of them, you know, I spent 300k to make 400 pots. That's a lot of money, I know. But it's worth it. You're not gonna use these constantly, you're gonna use them every now and then to catch that one night blade that's really pissing you off, and I feel like it is a worthy investment. So that's what's on the screen. But if you can't get these, any detect pot works. The reason that I like these is because this is the only recipe that is going to give you stamina back. So that keeps your sustain high while also giving you that immove and that stealth detect to absolutely shit on a night blades parade. And it's very it's important, in my opinion. I think it's vital. And all this other stuff is uh, it's whatever. Okay. Now, finally, we're gonna touch on the champion points. Green tree really doesn't matter at all, just get the, the important ones. I use Rationer, so I have extra time, my food and drink, save a little bit of money that way. And then Warmount, Gifted Rider, Steed's Blessing, all the movement-based ones, because that helps us get around Cyrodiil and other open-world zones more efficiently. And also, very important, always have the Breakfall, Reduce Fall Damage CP. Into the blue tree, we have Focus Mending for our single target heals. This is literally everything except for our Ritual, which is arguably one of our weaker heals anyway, so it's not a big deal. Very, very nice, very effective, very strong healing passive right here. Then we are combining Master at Arms and Biting Aura for our damage. 
Uh, Master at Arms will give all of our damage a buff, except for like Caltrops and the dots from our ultimates. This is going to buff our Crescent initial hit, our Dawnbreaker initial hit if you're using either of those. Jabs, every hit, Power of the Light, all that good stuff. And then Biting Aura is just going to be the icing on the cake. It's going to increase the damage of our uh, AoEs. That means our jabs. That means our ultimates. And that means our, uh, you know, if you, you know, the Caltrops. Caltrops is whatever, but it's extra damage. You know, what do you, who's going to say no to extra damage? And then lastly, we have Ironclad to reduce all direct damage. So that's your curses, your frags, your dawnbreakers, your subterranean assaults, your surprise attacks. Very important to have, in my opinion. And then in the red tree, I decided to focus on sustain and mobility. However, you can also go into just full tank mode with these CP. If you want, we'll talk about how to do that. But first, my preferred CP, I'm using Celerity for 10% movement speed at all times, because movement is key in my opinion. Sustained by Suffering, 150 extra health, magic, of stam recovery whenever you have a negative uh, effect on you, which is going to be most of the time, and so this additional sustain helps me stay in the fight longer because I don't run out of juice as fast, and I find that very important. Expert Evasion, this is a very important CP in my opinion, lots of people sleep on this. Getting a free roll dodge is super, super nice, and it really, really helps our sustain in a pinch. Highly recommend you have this. And then I have Boundless Vitality for 1,400 extra health, just to make us tankier, just to increase the healing on my uh, Living Dark. Now, the other options, if you just want to be as tanky as humanly fucking possible, are not in this tree. Not in this tree at all, they're in this tree right here. You can get, you don't want that, you want to get Pain's Refuge, because this reduces your damage taken by 1% per negative effect on you, which is going to be a lot when you're outnumbered. And I also actually highly recommend Juggernaut if you want to go tanky. Yes, this did get reduced by half, but 5% on top of the typically 7, 8, 9, 10% that you're going to have from Pain's Refuge is going to make you a lot tankier, and I would recommend you replace the Sustained by Suffering and Celerity for those because you'll be tankier, you're not going to have to run as fast, and you're not going to have to sustain as much because you're not going to be having to heal as often. So yeah, that's what you can do if you want to be tankier. And that is it for the CP. That is everything that is important. That is the build. I hope you guys like the build. If you like the build and you might want to give it a try, let me know that in the comments. If you think it's a stupid build and you think I should, you know, off myself or something for releasing this, go ahead again, let me know in the comments. I'll take it on the chin, alright? I'm a champion. But uh, guys, thank you so much, and uh, take care. So yeah, guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. I was going to end the video, but I just want to come in here, talk to you guys for a minute, just let you know again, I love you. I appreciate you for coming and checking this out. I hope the build is to your liking. I really hope that you don't hate it. If you do, then I don't know, I guess I'm a horrible person. Uh, I also wanted to say that, again, if you guys are not following the channel, please consider it because that means the world to me. That is the biggest possible help you can give me. And I love to watch this community grow because I've met a lot of great people doing this and I would love to have more of you guys. Uh, lastly, a uh, quick shameless plug. If you guys would like to support me, support my content and help me make sure that I can continue doing this as my job for however long I may be able to continue this. I do have a Patreon where you guys can support me. You see them on screen right now. My patrons, my beautiful, my beautiful little eggs. I love these people. They're amazing. And if you would like to be one of those people, there are some little tiny perks and stuff. But uh, mostly it's just a, hey, Kuro, I don't hate you and I, I, I like you a whole lot and I feel like you should continue making videos kind of thing. It's not an obligation. That's up to you. Either way, though, thank you so much for being here and I hope that you have a friggin' amazing day, alright? I love you guys. Kuro, out. Mwah.